What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I have Dr. Gonzalez back with us today. The last time she was on the channel, she had taken her board exams but had not received her results yet and we are thrilled and excited to announce that she passed. So she is legit, legit. Legit, legit. Dr. Gonzalez. <laughs> So I do want to tell you she is appearing on my channel today just to help me explain creatine, which is the topic of the video, but uh, she is not here to give any professional medical advice. Uh, as you're watching this video and you uh, learn more about creatine, please consult with your own physician uh, before you take any supplementation and um, just use this for informational purposes only. Okay? so. Uh, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks for being here. Uh, as I'm starting to lift weights again, I'm starting to look at, you know, some different natural supplements to take and one that always comes up is creatine. There's a lot of great information online and videos you can watch. Some information is great, some other uh, information maybe not so great, and maybe at best some of it is confusing. So we're here today to just kind of have a general discussion about creatine, why you should take it, potential side effects and why it's particularly good for someone on a plant-based diet like myself. So let's get into it. Let's get into the biochem. All right. So what is creatine? So creatine is a substance that's naturally made in the body. So your body produces about one to two grams per day of creatine. Okay. Um, it uses three main amino acids. So methionine, arginine, and glycine. Once you have those three amino acids, the kidney produces the precursor molecule, then it goes to the liver until you get what's called creatine, which is similar to the creatine that you supplement with. After it's produced, 95% of it actually goes to your skeletal muscle, which is okay. why it's used a lot for muscle recovery and exercise performance. But I think it's kind of interesting that a small portion of it goes to your brain and your heart. Fantastic. So <laughs> as I'm working out, mm -hmm. um, what is creatine doing in my body as I'm working out? So creatine is, we have this pathway drawn out here. So creatine is represented by CR. Um, and so I'm gonna explain this a little bit more in detail. So when you have muscle contraction in your skeletal muscles, you're using what's called ATP, which is your energy source. And what does ATP stand for? <laughs> it stands for adenosine triphosphate, which means you have three phosphate groups attached. And the reason why it is what's called an energetic molecule is because those phosphates that are attached, the three of them, every single time one of those bonds is broken, a large amount of energy is released. Um, as you start to cut the phosphate groups off, each of those bonds produces less energy, which is why ATP produces the most. So that first phosphate bond you cut off produces the most energy, which is how you produce ADP, which is adenosine diphosphate, meaning you only have two left. Okay. So you get muscle contraction, you take one of the phosphate groups off. Um, so in this diagram, we're gonna call it follow the phosphates. So phosphate is lost, now you only have two. In order to regenerate this ATP and attach that third phosphate group back on, you need this enzyme, which is called creatine kinase or CK. Um, <clears throat> and this is mainly found in skeletal muscle and also in the mitochondria, which is what's called the powerhouse of the cell. So what creatine kinase does is it takes a phos phosphate group and attaches it to creatine. So the creatine that you either produce in your body or that you're supplementing with. So in the mitochondria, it attaches this phosphate group stores the what's called phosphorylated creatine, so PCR, um, and this is what's stored in your muscles. When you're ready to do some high intensity working out, you take this phosphate group and attach it back to this ADP. So this is kind of this blue P turns into this tri, so the third phosphate group. Got it. So as I'm working out, let's say I'm doing biceps and I'm taxing and exhausting the muscle, by supplementing with creatine, I'm going from ADP back to ATP. In so many ways. So okay. this is its own pathway. The creatine okay. just makes sure that there's enough building blocks 
in order for you to facilitate this pathway. Got it. So it's not like you take creatine and you instantly produce ATP. It's just that if this cycle is going, you want to make sure that you have all the ingredients for the recipe of muscle contraction. Nice. Okay, so if you're researching creatine online, which you'll oftentimes come across, and what this particular brand uh, recommends is kind of a pre-loading period, right? This is a brand I just got at Whole Foods, creatine monohydrate, and it says to take one heaping teaspoon with fruit juice or sweetened liquid three to four times daily before or after sex exercise for the first seven days. That's kind of that preload period. And then go to, uh, for maintenance use, one to three times daily thereafter. So what are your thoughts on this whole preload concept? So <clears throat> one of the important distinctions to make is that creatine facilitates the muscle contraction that happens with um, fast twitch fibers. Okay. Um, and that's the majority of muscle fibers that you find in sprinters or people who are doing what's called anaerobic exercise, meaning there's not a lot of oxygen coming in because it's shorter intervals um, and you're producing a lot we're of going, lactic we're acid. Going, we're <laughs> yeah. okay. Okay. So the kind of sister pathway to that is if you're doing a lot of marathon running, you have a lot of what's called slow twitch fibers where you have a lot of oxygen coming in, which is why you carb load because you have time to process Makes those sense. carbs in order to have energy okay with fast twitch fibers when you take creatine you're helping your body facilitate this pathway um, the other important thing is when you take creatine and it does this pathway it only does it for about 10 to 20 seconds okay. which is why it's used for um, high in high intensity interval training or sprinters and things like that okay so how long should I take a supplement like this continuously like, is there a time, do I take a break or? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, so a lot of the research supports that you do like a preloading with creatine. Okay. Um, similar to what you would do with carb loading. Uh -huh. And the reason why they say that is because you just want to make sure, like I said, you have enough ingredients for this pathway. Okay. Um, but a lot of the research suggests that the, the group of people that may benefit from creatine supplementation the most are the people that are deficient in it, mm -hmm. which tend to be those that are on a plant-based diet because the main sources of creatine from food are from animal products. So red meat, herring, I think has the highest amount, which is 4.5 grams per uh, one pound of herring, which okay. is fish. Um, so if you're deficient in creatine, it can be good to supplement with it because then you are depleting these stores. So the preloading is making sure that you have enough before you engage in that type of activity. Mm -hmm. um, but taking like a uh, supplement vacation yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is not a bad idea. No, so a lot okay. of the research shows that after about three to four months, you want to take a break from the creatine because essentially with your body producing um, one to two grams per day, plus you supplementing for mm. three to four months, then you should have enough. Okay. Um, take a break and then you can come back to it later. Okay, that makes sense. Um, um, and the other reason why they suggest that is because by taking creatine, you're actually... Uh, I, I don't want to say stopping, but you're minimizing your body's own ability to produce creatine. Mm. So you want to take a break so your body remembers how to produce that molecule on its own. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so for just anyone in general who's watching, what are some natural ways through our diets that we can get creatine? So if you're not vegan, mm -hmm. herring has the highest content, so 4.5 grams per pound, yep. red meat. Okay. If you're vegan, um, that gets a little bit trickier because okay. it's found in muscle. Okay. Um, so I think there's basically trace amounts in a lot of fruits and vegetables. I think the highest amount is cranberries, which is 200 milligrams per 100 grams of cranberries. Yeah, look, cranberries. <laughs> yeah, okay. which is perfect if you are a cranberry sauce fan yeah. <laughs> for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's I guess. coming. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, but there's also a school of thought that if you supply the three amino acid building blocks, which are glycine, methionine, and arginine, that you can help support the production of creatine. Okay. And you can get those amino acids through sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, seaweed, mm. spirulina, um, walnuts, almonds. Um, but be just because you're giving your body those amino acids doesn't guarantee that all of those amino acids are specifically going to creatine because amino acids are used to build every protein in your body. Got it. Um, so that's kind of just like an upstream way to support the building blocks of this pathway. Mm -hmm. um, so most of the research actually suggests that you should just take a creatine supplement if you are on a plant-based diet and you are feel like you are deficient in creatine. Fantastic. Okay, so um, that is why I'm going to continue taking creatine monohydrate. 
Um, but like anything else, everything in moderation, right? So um, again, can't stress enough, do your research before taking any supplement and putting anything into your body because you may have some underlying conditions that something like this may exacerbate or uh, may assist with, right? So consult your physician, do your homework, do your research um, before putting anything into your body um, that's like a supplement or you know, anything otherwise. Um, takeaways. Takeaways. Yeah, what are some like key takeaways with creatine? So I think one of the biggest takeaways is a lot of times you see creatine in these pre-workout formulas. Mm -hmm. um, and so it has grown to have this association that you get a lot of energy from creatine, mm -hmm. which does happen, but not immediately. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when you take pre-workout supplements, it has some sort of caffeine in there, which is where you get that instant burst of energy. Uh, Whereas creatine is kind of like the long end game where you're just giving your body what it needs in order okay. to facilitate that type of activity long term. Got it. Um, second takeaway is that, like you said, you, they recommend that you take a heaping teaspoon with fruit juice. And that's because a lot of research shows that if you take creatine with about 100 grams of simple carbohydrates, so that's fruit juice or bread um, or a piece of fruit, that that can help facilitate bioavailability, okay. which means how available that substance is to your body to use. Got it. Uh, third takeaway is that those that may benefit the most from creatine supplementation are those that are deficient from it. So if you are mm. eating a lot of red meat and your body is already producing one to two grams per day of creatine, taking a creatine supplement may not benefit you as much as someone who is on a plant-based diet mm. who may need the actual supplementation of creatine that they're not getting from their diet. Makes sense. Um, and then the fourth takeaway is I'm a really big fan of the supplement vacation yeah. is that you want to make sure that you're giving your body what it needs to do this type of exercise, but you also want to remind it that it has a natural ability to produce creatine. Yeah. Um, so by giving yourself the creatine for a little bit and then taking a break for three to four months, you kind of remind your body that like, hey, I can just produce this stuff on my own too. Yeah, really good stuff. And I think uh, one of the most important things is if you're looking for something to give you like an immediate result, right? Um, there's stuff you can put into your body that's gonna do that, but more often than not, it's probably not good yeah. for you. Okay, so again, do your research, uh, make sure you're you know, really up to speed on what's gonna work best for you. Um, and again, um, Dr. Gonzalez is here just as a guest providing some information and background on, on creatine. Um, and so uh, consult your own physician if you have any questions. Um, the last thing I do want to uh, just ask you is um, a lot of people are probably going to wonder, is this what most people would consider like a steroid, right? Um, and is it like something that you should be concerned with if you're competing professionally that it may be like a banned substance? Yeah, so as far as my research has shown, it's not banned in any professional sports. Okay. Just because it doesn't give you an immediate effect like uh, steroids would or taking yeah. things like EPO. Right. Um, and so, like I said, it's a natural substance that's produced in your body mm -hmm. and it works through this kind of secondary pathway to support that. It's not an immediate, I'm going to get huge muscles and I'm going to be able to last forever in these workouts. Right. Um, and actually a lot of the research shows that when you take creatine, the muscle gains that you get are from muscle or from water retention in the muscles. Mm -hmm. But the long-term effects are creatine is that you're working out harder and longer, which is how you get the uh, muscle growth over time. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, nothing. Well, let's just put it this way. Anything um, that's meaningful takes time, work and effort, right? You'll always hear me talk about that on this channel is you got to put in the work. Yep. Um, man, that is some good stuff. <laughs> uh, I learned a lot and I appreciate you being on the channel and sharing that information with us. Thanks dad. <laughs> um, that's some, uh, if you didn't know that about, you know, all of this stuff about creatine, hopefully now you're a little bit more educated as I am. And, uh, man, just thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, so, uh, check it out if you're thinking about taking creatine now you've got some information i'll drop a link to this particular brand uh in the description box below i'll also drink a drop a link to dr gonzalez's instagram page make sure you follow her and check her out she's 
going to be doing some amazing things as a naturopath and um, we're just really excited and happy for you um, and excited to see what the future brings. Uh, with that being said, be well, be kind to yourself and others, and most importantly, be leaving yourself because if you don't, no one else will. Um, have oh, and then we're going to have an infographic on your Instagram. Right. Twitter. I will put an infographic, um, which <laughs> Dr. Gonzalez is going to help me with because I don't know how to make it, but it's going to be on my Instagram page, so be sure to check that out. Thanks for being here. Uh, we'll see you next weekend, and uh, stay safe and well.